I've had this enormous privilege that has really changed my life by being able to be a gardener in Monet's garden in France. And for 25 years, I've returned there every year to photograph it at the different seasons, at the different light. And that beauty that fed him uh, feeds me. I think people need a dream that they can feel that they can actually accomplish. When people learn about the environment and the garden that he created and how that inspired him and kept him going through the war and deaths in his family and, and how his ultimate work was to make this, this bouquet to, to France, which was his water lily paintings, to give people the, the atmosphere and the feeling of going into his water lily garden. This inspires people. And to have a sense of they can make beauty that will inspire them. And that gardening isn't just yard work. Gardening actually is this incredible um, art form and it's a way to be really close to nature. I think a lot of people don't really know Monet. Um, they just know him from the outskirts. They don't know what an incredibly passionate gardener he was. And he, he suffered with depression and times of great struggle and, and sorrow and loss in his life. But he prevailed with making something of such great beauty that here it is over 100 years later and it still astonishes and awes us and transforms us. And it started with creating his garden. When he made his garden of this beauty, it was his sanctuary that really created the art, that held him so that he could, he could really make these paintings that are universal and they're transformative. They're spiritual paintings, they're gorgeous. I think the number one thing that I offer people when I give a lecture about Monet's garden is inspiration to follow your dreams, to do what you really love, which of course Monet did and which I've been doing, and I think a sense of incredible beauty uh, with all the photographs to be able to see, and then to see some of Monet's paintings um, blended with the the different nuances of his garden and I always get touched by them opening up and them getting in tears or them getting so inspired. The garden really is a process over time and we know that but to think of Monet who so carefully watched moment by moment of his garden to try to capture that and, and paint it painted for maybe only 15 minutes a, a canvas, and then he changed to the ca another canvas. So he wasn't just thinking about the garden changing over seasons or the maturity of a plant, but he was looking at something that, that the nuance of the light and the effect on the plants. And he designed his garden that way, and he made his paintings that way, and it's a spiritual connection. And I, that is something that has inspired me and sustained me and kept me going to Giverny for 25 years. I want to share my insights and my great devotion and to beauty to help inspire and awaken other people's commitment to nature and the connection to what I believe is the sacred. And I think that it's, it's a gift that we can all have to ha live in a sense of gratitude and appreciation and not see anything as mundane or anything as, as um, not important. Sometimes when I've looked into a camera to take a picture, I am so much in awe of the beauty I see that I feel, uh, I say a prayer, I, I say a prayer of gratitude for what I see and a prayer to ask if I could capture this, 
that I will try to share it um, so that people's hearts will, will open. Or sometimes I think that there can actually be a healing vibration from seeing real beauty. And I'm sure wildlife photographers who get to see these amazing polar bears or, or animals in Africa or something, they must feel that I, this commitment to share it so people will, will, will feel the connection and commitment to those animals. And I feel that way when I see the light coming through a garden or a nuance of frost on something the dew that is like a little piece of mercury they're like magic and so hopefully there I can come out with a painting or something that actually has a vibration of the beauty of the place along with my spirit and with my eye and what I think is important and then it can be a gift to others and if I'm creating something in a garden if it can be something that catches the light or gives them a sense of scent and maybe a little sound uh, through the rustling of leaves or through uh, the sound of water or some incredible rocks, things that create a calmness. I think this is this is a gift. I think this is something that is um, that is worthwhile in our in our times of of, of such stress and strife.